This sweet little $35 hunk of magic micro nerdiness is a Raspberry Pi computer. It's small in cost, small in size, and also small in computing power. But they're so cheap. Couldn't we just take a group of them and mash them together into a clump to make a faster, more awesome computer? Apparently you can. And in part one of this video, I'm going to show you how to make a cluster computer out of a bunch of these cute little computer babies. <laughs> If you get any value from these videos and would like to give some value back, please consider becoming a patron of my show at patreon.com slash tinkernut. Okay, the madness that we're trying to create here is a way to take a bunch of these Raspberry Pi computers and combine their resources to make a more powerful computer. If you're wanting to make a supercomputer from this, here's the good news. You definitely can using what I'm about to show you. But the bad news is that if you're planning to make a supercomputer from Raspberry Pis, be prepared to spend thousands of dollars on equipment and dozens of frustrating hours. I'm just going to start with something smaller and make a simple cluster computer. Alright, here's what you're going to need. At least two Pis, two Pis, an SD card for each Pi, uh, the computer version that is, and they need to be at least 4 gigabytes in size, as well as power cables and Ethernet cables for each Pi. Then you're also going to need a hub or a router to network everything together. You can find links to everything in the descripty where you can stare at the prices and wonder why you'd ever pay that much to do anything like this. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, take one of your SD cards and put it into your computer. Then on your computer navigate to this link and download the Raspbian OS image. Now to bring this image to your SD card you're going to need another program called Win32 Disk Imager. Point it to your Raspbian image that you downloaded, and then select your SD card and click right. This may take a while, so have a slice of pie while you wait. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. This is definitely the best part of the tutorial. Alright, so when it's done, put the SD card back into the pie, add a keyboard, mouse, monitor, internet connection, and power it up. You should see this screen, so let's tweak things up a bit. First expand the file system to use the whole SD card, then let's overclock this bad boy to a zippy 800 megahertz. If you need to, under internationalization, you can set your keyboard layout, and then jumping to the advanced options, let's set this Pi's name to Pi01. Split the memory to 16 megabytes for the graphics, and then enable SSH. Finish out of the screen, and before rebooting, Edit this init tab file by commenting out this line and replacing it with this line to allow for automatic login. Then reboot this tripped out beast and check to make sure it auto logs in. Okay, this is the point in the tutorial where if you're faint of heart, you might want to stop here. Because the rest of the video requires some epic command line kung fu. You've been warned. Make a download directory and navigate to it. Then download the MPICH software from their website and unzip it. MPI stands for Message Passing Interface, and it's what's going to allow us to combine the Pi's processing powers. Try saying that three times fast. Go back to the home directory and let's make a new install folder to install our project, and then make a build folder in your home directory to compile it. CD into that directory and let's start making this sucker. First install G4Tran, otherwise your build is going to error out. Now configure MPICH to our install folder, and when that's done, just make and make install it. This process is going to take a long, long time, so go ahead and have another slice of pie. Or three. Alright, when that's done, we need to add the MPI install path to the boot environment by jumping back a folder and editing the bashrc file. At the bottom of it, add this path command and save it and then reboot your machine. Once it reboots, you can test to make sure everything's working by typing in this command and seeing if it returns the name of your Pi. As is, this can run Fortran and C programs, but since the Raspberry Pi comes pre-installed with a Python coding platform, let's install a Python interpreter for MPI. 
Start by installing the Python developers environment and then download the latest version of MPI 4 Pi from the link below. Unzip it and then jump into that unzip folder. Build the setup file, have a piece of Pi, install it, have a piece of Pi, and then add this folder location to your Python path. Now let's run a demo Python file to see if it works with MPI. If you're successful, then pat yourself on the back for unleashing your inner geek. Then shut down the Pi, pop out the SD card, and pop it back into your computer. Using Win32 Disk Imager again, create a new location to store an image of this SD card. Make sure the correct drive is selected and click Read. This will copy the image from the SD card to your hard drive, where you can then copy this same image to all your other SD cards for the remaining pies. This is a good place to stop before your brain explodes from pseudo commands and nano edits. We'll pick things up in part two of the cluster computing series, which covers how to configure multiple pies and run Python programs on them. So stay tuned. Click here to watch the previous tutorial and comment show. And don't forget to show your support by donating to Patreon or subscribing to my YouTube, Google Plus, or Twitter pages. And for more, go to Tinkernut.com, where technology and creativity collide.